Hey, it's Jeff off the Green Iron, and today I'm assembling a hand reel. This is a hand, <coughs> handmade hand reel that my uh, father made on the lathe. And basically, in this end, it's a removable um, kind of wooden capsule, just kind of pressure fitted in with uh, uh, elastic band, and kind of this kind of just winds on but just gives it an extra container and the back end here is hollow and again it's just a pressure fit cap on the end but just looking through my kit and looking for a variety of items that I could use we've got a different uh, different snaps and swivels one of two bobbers some weights for um, casting it out a variety of hooks jig heads including a floating one, a couple of spinners, a variety of sized uh, jigs and twisters and a couple of homemade ones that was uh, one I made out of paracord and that was one I made out of a feather for flotation and uh, wrapped some uh, raccoon hair on there so anyways let's see what we can fit inside our, uh, our hand reel and then we're going to use a really light line I think that would be better for casting this is a four pound test and uh, that uh, that'll be better for handling some of these these smaller lures so you can see here this is a just a pressure fit cap in there it's about um, that deep on the inside just a spare elastic right now this is a little velcro strap if I need it and the reel is held like this and as you toss it, you re release the thumb, and the line spins off here. Now, in the end, uh, this was originally um, just kind of milled, milled flat on the lathe, but I bored it out with a Forstner bit. And here is um, kind of a wooden capsule. You can get these off Amazon, and they seal up uh, um, virtually watertight. And now, originally, they were a little loose in the end here. But with a wrap of elastic, it creates almost like a just a press fit in there. And it really just holds it in. There's no way that's coming out. It's almost like a gasket fit right there. Just wind it down to the end. And as it rolls up, it rolls back in on side, inside itself. So I think what I want to do is to put some of the smaller pieces in the top. Looks like the bobbers will have to go on the bottom. So I have to choose a selection of hooks here. Um, again, the smaller, smaller ones, the better. Um, these are, uh, I'll throw in a few different jig heads of various weights. And a couple of little, little micro, micro jigs, micro tubes. Okay, and I'm gonna put some of the the bare hooks in there as well. A couple of inline ones so I can string them together. There's one there. <clears throat> Mount your line off the top and then through the bottom down to a weight and then that can sit, sit off the bottom and uh, attract fish, fish like that. A little horizontal presentation. Uh, I think I'll put a couple of swivels in there. And there's another similar hook there. Let's see that. Actually, I'm not going to use that one just... Oh, sure, I'll throw it. An assortment of uh, split weights, a little split shot. Oh, that's a... It keeps hold... It holds quite a bit. So a couple of... Uh, 
other shake heads in there. This one's a little different. This one's a, um, a floating jig head, so you could make a, uh, kind of a surf, surface lure, if you will. So, I think that's all I need for some of the, the hardware in the top. And maybe one or two more things I can stick at the top there. There's another little treble hook. That's a nice perch. Lure. So I'm going to spin that on there and that's almost watertight. It gives it some really great forward weight. Now on the bottom, kind of a, my thumb barely touches the end so you get a thumb size depth on there. Um, I think I have all the, I'm going to put in the bottom some pre-made jigs. Well, I think I'm going to put the bobber. This is the larger of the two two bobbers, but uh, I think we can get away with the larger one. Perfect. So these are where we're going to put some smaller pre-made jigs, shake them down. I'm not going to fit everything we found, uh, we dug out in here. I was going to take a, a spinner bait, but I don't think I can reel it fast enough to be very good movement. This is a little MEPS number one Black Fury, but I don't think I can retrieve it fast enough. <clears throat> I had thought of putting a fire steel in there, but uh, I think it's just going to take up too much space. So pre-made jigs it is. And again, these are this this setup is primarily for panfish. There's another black and yellow. And I want to put this weight in. This will allow that to allow the uh, the rig to settle on the bottom and um, keep it uh, keep it off the bottom, and then fish that horizontal presentation and uh, a couple other ones here I'm just going to leave them off to the side um, okay I've got sinkers weights good I think that's that's all I'm going to go with in this one see if the cap will fit in and a nice pressure fit now we're going to spin the line on here and uh, Get enough line on here that we can uh, we can certainly cast it out and if we have a fish take it take off with it enough that we can uh, let it run just out of uh, availability the line that i'm going to use today is uh, a suffix ice magic cold water line a uh, six pound test 100 yards so we're going to see if we can wrap this on there and that'll be more than enough uh, to uh, to use in this hand reel uh, and then we can actually, uh, it'll be all set up for uh, winter time too. But what a great way to put a, a little rod kit together and throw that in your pack. So for doing a clove hitch, it's uh, loop away, loop away, second loop over the first one. And then you put that double loop over top. And we're gonna pull that tight. And a couple overhand knots. Oops, pulled that a little too hard.
Now I'm going to spin away from me. I'm going to try to level wind this the best I can back and forth across the. Uh, in fact, I'm going to pull this piece out of here. <clears throat> this would be a great piece to transport, um, but then pull it out because as I spool it on here, I want to be nice and close to this this lip so it spools on very quickly and I can uh, wind the fish in very quickly without having to reach around kind of that. Uh, the external blend there. Come on. This is going to be tying, tying most of these uh, lures and my jigs right to this line. I always have to have lots of line on here. You never know when you get it hung up and you're going to lose a little bit, so it's always good to have as much as you need. That's, uh, I think I used this once before on some of the other ice fishing rods, so I don't think I have about 100, 100 yards on here. Let's see how much was on this spool. 100 yards, 90 meters. I would think I have close to that much. Done. There it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie um, probably a, a jig that I'd commonly use right to the end of this to have it ready. So let's see what happens. Maybe we'll just tie this one on. This was a, a jig head. You can see that right through there. And this was just a old piece of um, kind of olive drab camel paracord that you cut off, kind of twirl the hook through. And I had some, a little bit of uh, fuzz out the front, but that's all been melted down. And then I've just let the tail uh, kind of uh, just tease it apart and let it fray on its own. So it gives a good, uh, good motion in the water, certainly when it's wet. So. Why don't we just start with this one? And I use, a, because I'm not going to be swapping it out too much, I'm going to use it. I think it's a fisherman's knot that I use if we can get it through the eyelet here. Start with a loop. This will have to be a very small one. Maybe this jig head's too small for this knot. And we'll just do a single. <clears throat> So I'll feed the line through through the eyelet and spin the jig head. Oh, I go half a dozen times and take the loose tag back through the loop created that ran through the eyelet of the jig and then tag in back through the new loop that you created pull tight somebody some people say add a little bit of water on that and then pull the tag end and your line end tight snip off the extra I always go down close to maybe a, I don't know, an eighth of an inch outside and double check that it's nice and tight and there we go. So, what I'm going to do now is roll this up and I really want to keep it from unraveling. So, I had a. Where did I go? There we go. I had a little <clears throat> Velcro tie or an elastic. And that will wrap right around, in fact, covering the hook. But elastic would work fine. There we go. There's elastic here. I might roll that up for good measure and just put it over the tag end. I'm at my trailer. We got a big water park out in front of our trailer, right in the lake, and 
<laughs> Lots of screaming and carrying on. So there we go. And uh, we'll put our extra weights and hooks and jam that in there in the loose end. There we go. So now that I got I got it all made, I gotta get out of the lake and give it a try. Stick around and try to get some footage. Hey, it's a very noisy and busy waterfront, but I thought I'd give this give this uh, practice throw. Here's the, uh, the plug with all the, the weights and uh, hooks in it. I'll take that, put it in a pocket. Get our safety string off here. What I found was the last thing is, is the first thing is, and that's our bobber. So we're going to establish, based on our, our water, how deep we need to go. And this water is quite shallow. I just want it below the surface. Okay, like that top of the water facing up and that's the depth under the surface that we want our lure. So with your thumb on the spool you can pull out a link and wind it up and give it a toss. As you toss you point the spool in the direction of the cast. 